At this point, I think we're growing potatoes in every way imaginable this season. Guten gardening, everybody. Okay, so maybe it's a bit of an exaggeration to say that we're growing potatoes in every method imaginable, but we've got more than a baker's dozen worth of ways, whether we're talking about different growing mediums or different containers, etc., that we're growing potatoes this season. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you a potato garden tour. And I'm gonna do this for a couple of reasons. One, I wanna get you inspired. You know, sometimes we limit ourselves to the ways in which we've always grown something. So we're gonna show you about 14 different ways that we've got potatoes growing. Some of them are great for small space gardens. Some of them require a little bit more space. But we're going to show you the different ways for inspiration and we're also going to talk to you about some of the positives as well as some of the challenges with each of these growing styles if you're on team potato leave a hashtag team potato down in the comments while you're watching this video i gotta tell you we've got so much to look forward to in the way of potato harvests coming up in the near future we've got potato experiments etc let's go ahead and take a look at some of the potatoes that we have growing here at Guten Gardening. I think the place that I'm gonna start with this video is the more traditional method of growing potatoes in ground. And there's only one space here that we're growing potatoes in ground. And the potatoes that we're growing are our French fingerling potatoes. Now, we're only growing one variety in ground because of the major challenge here in zone five wisconsin that comes with growing potatoes in ground for us and that is that we have a really clay soil and so the biggest challenge i would say is harvesting the fingerling potatoes or harvesting the potatoes that we're growing in ground that's why we typically plant our potatoes in either raised beds or a place where we can control the soil or potting mix better. Now beyond that, I'll say a positive is that our potatoes grown in ground typically perform really well. Clay soil tends to be fairly nutrient dense. And so even though the harvest can be a little bit more of a challenge because of the clay soil, because of the successes we've seen in previous year's harvests, we're still growing some in ground. Now the area where these potatoes are growing is in our front garden space. In that area we've tilled, we've added compost over the last couple of years to try to improve the soil tilth. But again, it's still a bit of a challenge, but we've seen good results, so we continue to grow there. And these French fingerlings, these are year four. These are fourth generation fingerlings from a 99 cent store-bought bag that we rescued, well, four years ago. And so we're gonna to continue to grow potatoes in this front garden space in ground as long as we see good results. All right, I'm gonna move over to a different medium altogether, and that is our Ruth Stout potatoes which are potatoes that we're growing in hay, just hay. Actually, in the past, the last couple of seasons when we've grown in our roost style, we call it a roost style modified type bed because at the time we had added a little bit of potting mix to get the potatoes going. Well, we are now in year number four of this area where we've created this roost style bed. And so this is the first year where we only added hay. And yes, I said hay, not straw. A lot of people will tell you that you get a ton of weeds with hay. So hay or straw, I don't know that it necessarily matters, but we've been using hay and we haven't really noticed that much in the way of weeds. Now, from our point of view, there are tons of positives for roof style potatoes. For one, they are the easiest potatoes to harvest because really what we do when we harvest roof style potatoes is we just pull back the hay. There is no soil, no native soil, nothing that we have to really get in and try to dig through. It's just literally pulling back hay and seeing your harvest. So one, it's really easy. Two, it's incredibly low maintenance. For us, what we found is we typically don't have to water because the hay holds in moisture really well. And all we're really doing for maintenance is to continue to add hay throughout the season to try to keep the stems covered up a little bit. So it's easy in terms of maintenance and it's very easy in terms of harvest. Now, a couple of challenges that come along with Ruth Stout Method. One, it is the most open in terms of the way animals have access to it. And so what we've seen is our main critter around here that, that really gets in and likes potatoes is our voles. And we've seen a substantial amount of vole damage. I've heard other people talk about their fear of snakes 
moving in. Well, knock on the soil out here. We haven't seen snakes in our area, so hopefully that doesn't happen. But again, the, the major challenge from what we've seen is that this is wide open to nature. It's not the protective walls of a raised bed, for example. I'll also say that another challenge with this is the first year of putting hay out there or straw or whatever you're using, it won't have broken down very much. So it's one where you're going to get a couple of years in when you really start to see better and better production. So you have to maybe be a little bit more patient with whatever it is that you're using as your medium for your roost out method. But beyond that, it's a solid method and we're looking forward to a good roost out potato harvest. Now, I think that segues really well into the next growing setup that we have, which is a vertical roost out type of setup. What we've done is to modify some of those large tomato cages that a lot of people make, and we've wrapped some black plastic around it to keep the heat up, especially since we have a shorter growing season and we wanna heat things up early on. And then we added a bunch of hay. And the hay that we added came from our hay bales that we've used in the past to grow in. Once they're spent, once they're done, and they've fallen apart, we've just taken all of that and put it into this vertical setup. This is our second year trying to grow in this setup where we grow sweet potatoes toward the bottom and potatoes on top. Now last season our production was okay. We did have some vole damage once again because I mean it's just hay even though it's wrapped in plastic the voles can get in there pretty easily. Now one of the positives is this type of setup is really easy to put together in terms of what we're able to add to this. If we have additional hay it's going to keep settling throughout the season as it breaks down and we can just keep adding on top of that. So season over season, we do have to keep adding to it, otherwise it would just keep settling to a point where we can't use it, but it's really easy to add to. Harvest is also very straightforward because we can unwrap the black plastic and get in there and harvest if we're talking about the sweet potatoes. For the potatoes, what we've found is it might have been easier for us to make it only about three feet high instead of the four feet high that it is because you know, I'm six foot two. I have to stand on a step stool and reach over and kind of dig way down in there to access the potatoes. So that's a bit of a challenge with this method, I would say, is harvesting could be easier for the potato part of it because we don't want to unwrap it all at the same time. The sweet potatoes are typically harvested a little bit later for us. Now, that being said, even though that piece is a bit of a challenge, once again, just like the other roost style method, it should be that year over year over year, the production gets better and better. And so I think this is another method where you need to be a little bit more patient. Still, our production last year was promising and we're really hopeful. I think the, the plants themselves have been growing longer. They died back a little too quickly last year, but they've been growing longer in it this season already and they've still got some life in them. So I can't wait to see what that kind of productivity leads to. How many of you have thought about growing potatoes vertically? I mean, that's one way that we're growing them vertically. It saves us space if you have a limited garden space. I mean, our roost out bed we've spread out, it's about 20, 25 feet long. Not everybody has a three by 25 foot area that they can dedicate to potatoes. So a vertical bed might be the way to go. And so that leads us to our next method as well. So in addition to the vertical roost out bed that we've been growing potatoes in, we're also once again growing potatoes in our green stalk vertical garden. You know, we've done some really cool things with our green stalks. We've grown a ton of varieties of vegetables, but one of my favorite harvests probably of all time was the red, white, and blue harvest we did from our first year growing in our green stalk vertical garden when we grew potatoes there. It was just so much fun to get in there and look at how, how many potatoes came out of a small vertical space. Last season we didn't do as well. There were a bunch of variables that I think came to play, but this season I'm, I'm really hopeful. I'm looking at the plants right now. They're starting to flower and I'm seeing the potential for these plants and hoping for a really nice harvest. Now, one of the positives, again, with the green stock vertical garden and growing potatoes in this way is, well, for the green stock specifically, we water from the top 
in one location the water flows down throughout the entire system and that's an easy way to water our potatoes secondly access to all of the plants is very simple as long as we place our green stalk in a way that we can walk the whole way around we can see exactly what's going on with everything at all times we can feed and fertilize quite easily into each of the pockets and when it comes time to harvest that entire green stalk can be separated into each of its tiers we're using the five tier original series so we can separate that out into each of its tiers and it makes for a really easy potato harvest now the biggest challenge with this method if i were to name a challenge is to make sure that your mix is appropriate for what you're growing so it needs to be a good well draining mix if you put a mix in here that is too dense that doesn't drain well you're going to have problems with your potatoes rotting etc beyond that if you don't have a good location for a vertical garden where you can get sunlight all the way around the plant or at least have a mover so you can turn the tray around turn the entire green stalk around then you might find yourself in a difficult position because areas could get shaded out but besides that i would say that it's a great method for growing potatoes especially since it takes up so little space so for those of you who want to grow potatoes but you have a tiny location you could pick one, two, three, four, five tiers, however many tiers you wanted to, and dedicate them to potatoes, and you're only taking up about three square feet. All right, let's move on to our raised bed potatoes, and we have three different types of raised beds where we're growing our potatoes this season, and they've actually each been started at different points in the season as well. Now, the raised beds that we're growing in vary in terms of size, in terms of depth, etc. One of the things that we've made sure of though for each of the raised beds is that we have enough depth for our potatoes to grow well in. One of the things you don't want to run the risk of doing is to have too shallow of a space for your potatoes to develop and then you won't get the kind of harvest you'd like. So we have a six by six keyhole bed, which means that we have a little cutout in our bed so we can reach all throughout the bed from one or two locations. We have a six by six keyhole bed that's about 24 inches deep. We have a three by six bed that currently we just did a video on fall planting of potatoes. We've got some fall potatoes planted in there. I think we're gonna see a really nice bit of production there. That's a bed that's anywhere from 18 to about 24 inches deep because it's on a little bit of a slope. And then we have our 32 foot long narrow bed it's about three and a half by 32 feet long and we've got 16 feet of that dedicated to our potatoes and what i can tell you about that one is it is the shallowest bed in terms of the exterior wall but we've filled up the mix that's inside and so the potatoes still have plenty of depth and then they would eventually reach our native soil but what we've got as a mix in each of these is a nice loose well draining mix now here are some of the positives of growing in a raised bed if you've never done this before i highly encourage you to give it a try because with our raised beds you have complete control over the mix that's inside and that is huge you want to talk about an easy potato harvest you have a nice loose mix that you've created for a raised bed we can dig down i can dig down with my hand 12 13 inches with little to no struggle into those raised beds so i can pull out potatoes so easily it is such an easy harvest probably second only to our roost out method in terms of our our potatoes and ease of pulling them out of the ground i would put raised beds up there really high in terms of the way that we like to grow potatoes so i would say ease of harvest and absolute control over the mix those are huge positives for raised beds they're also raised which means it should be easier on your back on your legs etc and as i get older i appreciate that more and more so that's another positive in growing potatoes in raised beds raised beds also offer some protection from pests although again i always come back to the voles out there because the voles find ways they they're just very creative in their ways of getting into whatever potatoes or sweet potatoes we're growing but they do the raised beds do provide some protection 
but it's not perfect. If I had it to do all over again, I would have put down some hard wire cloth before we built these raised beds. At this point, that would require a ton of work because we got a good bit of mix in these beds. So from my point of view, that's one of the few challenges that we have to deal with still are some of the pests in the raised bed. And because it's raised up, that means that the temperature, the ambient temperature outside actually impacts the bed more than in ground. Now that's typically more of an issue at the beginning or at the end of the season if you have colder weather at both ends, like the bookends. But one of the things that we've tried to do to alleviate some of that is we've wrapped these in black plastic. So our raised beds, the ones that are taller anyway, are wrapped in black plastic. But beyond that, from our point of view, growing potatoes in raised beds, it's a fantastic idea. All right, here's where we start to get even more creative, and that is with our container potatoes. And when I say containers, I mean all different kinds, types, and ways that you can think of, and types of containers that you can think of to grow potatoes in. We've probably done it and are probably doing it this year. You know, one thing that we're not doing yet is hydroponic potatoes. Hmm. But let's talk about what we're actually growing in right now. We have grow bag potatoes. Most of the grow bags that we grow in are three to 10 gallon grow bags. I think three is about as small as you wanna go for grow bags, but we have quite a few varieties growing in grow bags this year. And in terms of containers, I would say that grow bags, the cloth grow bags, tend to be pretty nice. They're easy to move around. As the season changes, if your lighting changes, as your needs change, you can pick up the grow bag and move it to wherever you want. That's a fantastic positive. One of the challenges that come with growing in grow bags, and you've probably seen this to be true, they dry out fairly quickly. And so you have to stay on top of watering them or else you're gonna find yourself with a problem with the overall development and production of your potatoes. One of the things that we've recommended in the past and that we still do for a large number of our grow bags is we'll take a trash bag, a plastic trash bag, and put it over top the outside of the grow bag to try to hold in some of that moisture. Well, we definitely like growing potatoes in grow bags. And on top of that, we like growing potatoes in buckets, especially free buckets that we've gotten from the grocery store. I think if I had to calculate everything, we've probably gathered 20 to 25 buckets that we can use in our garden from our local grocery store bakery. Those free buckets have translated into a bunch of buckets for potatoes. Right now, we've got eight or nine buckets with potatoes growing in them, lots of different varieties. As far as positives go for growing in buckets, well, again, just like with grow bags, they're easy to move around, easy to relocate if needed. They're cheap, that's huge for us. And I would say that they also dry out, maybe not quite as quickly as the grow bags because they're not as porous, but you do need to make sure you put holes in the bottom or else you're gonna waterlog your potatoes. In terms of challenges, I would say the big thing is that most of the buckets that we've gotten for free are three to four gallon buckets. They're just not all that big. So you're not gonna necessarily be able to plant a ton of potatoes inside, but still, I think the positives outweigh the potential challenges here. They're just, so easy to grow in, and that's something that we would definitely recommend you give a try. Now this season, we're also growing in a galvanized steel trash can. I only got a six gallon trash can as a starter. They have 20, 25 gallons out there as well, but this is our first year experimenting with this, and so I can't really speak too much to the overall positives and negatives because I haven't seen results yet. What I can say is that the galvanized steel seems like it should be more impacted by heat than a lot of our other materials because of the fact that it's metal. So it should get a little bit warmer. That's my guess, that's just speculation. And so that might be something interesting to look at. It's six gallons, so it's not massive, but we still got three potatoes planted in there. And so that will also be interesting for us to see the overall amount. Just like most of our other containers though, again, ease of movement, ease of location, and galvanized steel has a pretty cool look to it. So in terms of curb appeal, and this is just a personal opinion, this one, a six gallon one in particular, is something that I wouldn't have a problem putting out toward the front. I think it's a pretty cool experiment anyway. So we're gonna see how that turns out. I've seen other people grow in these successfully, so I think we should have some pretty good results here in the next couple of months. And then there's our cardboard boxes. Now we just did a video talking about some 
really discounted soil that we got from the store and how we were growing potatoes for dirt cheap. And I think there are a ton of benefits for growing in cardboard boxes. We read some comments of people who've grown a bunch of stuff beyond potatoes in cardboard boxes, and most of those comments were very pleased with their results as well. So while this is our first year growing in cardboard boxes, I can definitely speak to some of the positives. One, cardboard breaks down. So it's not like we're buying more plastic. It's just another way for us to use something that would otherwise just be recycled. And we know from our vermiculture experience that worms love cardboard as well. So once we've grown in this for a season, we can shred it up, tear it up, and our worms will take care of it. Or we can just put it into our compost. Boxes also come in all different shapes and sizes. So if you have a perfect little nook somewhere, you'll probably find a box that's the right height, width, etc., that you can place into that location. Now, I'm not going to say that you can move this around very much after you've planted. That might be one of the challenges with growing in a cardboard box is that after a couple of rainfalls etc the sides may be just fine and that's what we found we have one here that's been growing for about two months now almost two months and it's still perfectly fine but if i lifted it up we may lose everything so that's one of the challenges put it in place and you're not going to want to move it but again it's easy to work with easy to fill and pretty easy to locate a cardboard box just about anywhere in my opinion so this might be another way that you could like us grow some potatoes again most of our harvests are a little over a month away although there are a couple here that are looking pretty close to being done and i'm going to move over to those potatoes next now if i had to speculate as to our most successful harvest ever it's probably going to be our purple magic molly potato harvest grown in our 50 gallon food safe plastic bins that we cut in half long ways. We also cut some in half vertically and we've been growing in these now. This will be year number four growing potatoes in this type of container and we've had success actually both ways of cutting these plastic containers. What we've seen is that the depth, which is somewhere between eight to about 11 inches or so, when they're cut long way, is enough for us to see good production. As long as we stay on top of adding in and hilling our potatoes as we go throughout the season. And the bins that we've cut in half sideways, meaning that we have a little bit more depth, but not as much length, we've seen great production from our fingerling potatoes. And this season we have a couple of different varieties of potatoes growing. We have magic mollies growing in a couple of them. And then we have our mega chip potato experiment, which will probably be our first potatoes that we harvest this season. Those potatoes are starting to die back nicely they've been growing the longest here i have not dug down in there but i am confident there's some nice potatoes in there and it'll be really interesting to see how those potatoes do and if you don't know what i'm talking about for our potato experiment we're experimenting around with taking the flowers off of some of the potatoes and leaving them on other potatoes so when we do that harvest video we're going to have an opportunity for you all to fill out that form if you're taking part in that experiment. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put a link to that video in the description so you could join in on that experiment if you haven't already harvested your potatoes. Now, some of the positives of growing in these containers, it's food safe plastic, it's heavy duty. These things show absolutely no sign of wear and tear even after four years. And we bought these on Craigslist, I want to say locally, for either five or ten dollars depending on the bins per bin that's so cheap as far as a container goes for something that's going to be long lasting so i'm going to say that that's one of the positives for growing in this type of container so it's cheap it's sturdy we control the mix that goes in so it's an easy harvest as well in terms of challenges knock on dirt again the animals have never found their way into those potatoes now as soon as i say that some critter is going to come along and they're going <laughs> to they're going to eat up our potatoes but we've lost no potatoes to vole damage in those plastic containers so i don't really have much in the way of challenges i will say oh I, okay i got one as far as containers go they're heavier because they're bigger so you're not going to be able to move them around very much once you're growing in them so find a nice spot what we've done is we've connected four of them together side by side with bolts and we put bricks underneath it so it's like this really long almost like a trough 
that we're growing in. So that's something you wanna keep in mind. They're not lightweight once you get them mixed in there. So you're not gonna be moving them around very much. And then we have our hanging basket potatoes. And hanging baskets are kind of a novelty in a way because one, in order to grow potatoes in a hanging basket, you're gonna need a pretty big hanging basket. And it's a little bit difficult to find a shepherd's hook that can hold a hanging basket like that. So we've made our own. So if we're gonna talk about challenges, I'm gonna be upfront with that. You'll probably have to create something to hold a heavy, heavy hanging basket. And I'll also say that even the big hanging baskets don't have a ton of space or a ton of depth. And so the amount of potatoes you might get out of this might not be as much as just about any of the other methods that we've talked about. And because there's less soil, you're gonna to have to make sure you keep them watered or they'll dry out fairly quickly. However, we've seen success growing and hanging baskets. And from my own point of view, this is a different type of vertical gardening. I mean, we're adding to the vertical space because a shepherd's hook doesn't take up very much space and you can grow plants underneath it and have the hanging baskets there. So a positive is you're adding to your growing space while not taking up necessarily any more of your, we'll call it your horizontal space. I'll even say there's something really visually appealing about hanging baskets from my point of view. I like the different levels and layers in the garden. I think that's really nice. They're easy to work with since they're vertical. That means that you don't have to bend over to deal with them. You can just sit there, pull out any weeds that may have floated in. And quite frankly, they're pretty low maintenance as well. They're easy to feed, easy to access. So I think there are definite positives to growing in hanging baskets, even if they're not necessarily the most productive of the different methods in which we're growing it. Now we also have one potato plant that's growing in a plastic pot. It's the only one like it and it's our true potato seed and I'm only going to give you a real quick look at it right now. I'm not going to spend any more time talking about pros and cons but what I can tell you is make sure you've got plenty of depth if you're going to grow in a plastic pot like this one. I want you to think about all the different ways that you've seen us growing potatoes in this video and I know it's a longer video and if you're still here still watching I appreciate you so much for doing that but I want you to think to yourself Beyond how you're currently growing potatoes, what is one setup out of all of those, maybe your favorite one that you would consider growing potatoes in, if not for fall potatoes this season, then for potatoes in the upcoming season? Which one of those methods has piqued your interest the most, has really caused your mind to start thinking about growing potatoes differently or expanding the way that you're currently growing potatoes. Let us know in the comments. I'm so excited for the next couple of months. You know, it was a pretty tough start to the season with a lack of rain here, but things are starting to really take off and I'm hopeful for some really nice potato harvests. Well, folks, if you enjoyed today's video, if you found it informative, don't forget to give us a like. Leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.